everybody. My name is Tyler Erickson and I own and operate Top Notch Taxidermy in Brookings, South Dakota. You can look me up on the web if you want at topnotchtaxidermy.com. Um, I do a little bit of everything, some African stuff. I do a lot of fish, a lot of birds, a lot of game heads, mostly whitetail and mule deer in South Dakota and uh, a fair amount of antelope as well, some elk and sheep, and, but mainly deer heads and fish and birds uh, are what keep me busy most of the time. just want to give you a little bit of info about myself and how I run my business. Um, I guess I kind of have built my business on quality over quantity. Um, there's several different business models in the taxidermy world that have been proven successful for guys. Some, some guys um, don't uh, put as much time into the small details and stress about the things. They just try to provide a decent product um, but get it back to the customer really quickly and don't uh, charge quite as much for it but they make their money more through volume uh, and production. Whereas I've spent a lot of time trying to um, do different competitions and different trainings and learn as much as I can to continually improve my work to be at the best level that it can be. Um, I've been fortunate enough to win the Minnesota and South Dakota state champion fish title uh, last year in 2013 and I took some stuff down to the world show for the first time. and. Took uh, first place uh, with a mule deer in this corner, which I'll show you in a little bit, and this bluegill pumpkin seed replica um, in the professional division. And then I competed with that walleye in the Masters and did pretty good in that too. So um, my goal is to keep keep doing competitions and try to just be as good as I can be because that's kind of my personality. If I do something, I want to do it the best of my ability. Um, and I want to work with customers that are expecting a good quality product. Um, but it just, you know, it, it just depends. Both models work for guys. So you just kind of have to decide what personality you are. And if you don't have the time, and, and some guys it's just too frustrating to try to get all the little details in the eyes and everything just perfect. Or they'd rather just get it looking pretty good from like 10 feet away and not not be able to take a flashlight up to it and say wow this is really really perfect all the way through all the little stuff that is harder to notice from a distance so you just have to decide which which model you want to pursue you know if you're really wanting to continue to learn and take your work to the next level I'd recommend getting involved in your local state taxidermy association and start attending shows and don't expect to do well at first but just go there to learn and keep learning and uh, learn different techniques and really study your animals and use reference and uh, just try to duplicate everything as close as you can uh, maybe even if, even if it's different than how you've learned or or what someone's taught you it should look like or what you think it looks like in your mind uh, make sure that what you're going off of is what your pictures and your photo reference are telling you on your live fish or your live animals. Um, so I'll show you around the shop a little bit now and just show you, uh, this is just some different customer work I've got hanging in here at the moment and uh, a few of my own things that I've taken to shows or a few of my own trophies over the years. So. I hope that these through these videos and this taxidermy training that you can um, you know learn some of the basics but also learn different techniques and just be encouraged to try things that may give you a little better result or uh, here's a couple customer perch I just finished up some big South Dakota jumbo perch the lighting in here is not the best but here's a nice largemouth bass. I'm big on the scale tipping and you can kind of see that through the back through this region of the fish and the light. This one's been 
hanging in here for a long time. I don't know why that guy hasn't come to pick it up yet, but that's part of the business too. That fish is about a seven pound South Dakota largemouth, which is huge for South Dakota. And uh, it's been hanging in here for about eight months. He won't come pick it up. I don't know. I can't get a hold of him. So hopefully he's all right. But that's part of the business. I mean, it's frustrating when you spend five, six, seven, eight hours on something like that, and then you don't get paid for it because the guys don't come and, and pick it up. Uh, this is that mule deer that I shot last year with my bow. Zoom out a little bit so you can see it on the nice base pedestal that I had made for it. But that's the one I competed with last year and did really well in the, in the shows with that one. And then just some more customer deer hanging on the wall. Some of my own fish on the table. And some different awards that I've won. Best all-around taxidermist last year in South Dakota, which was an honor to win that. We have a lot of good taxidermists in the state and surrounding states that I compete against. And some McKenzie Awards for Fish and Wasco Award for Most Artistic. Kind of zoom in on this little replica here. See, he's got nice color on him. And Kind of a different style base that I made. Splash scenes, you can have all kinds of fun with this stuff. That's a smallmouth I caught on top water probably six years ago and I've had that mount for about four years. Pretty dirty now. And then here's my competition walleye from last year that I took the best of show award with in South Dakota. So it's fun. I just choose to kind of try to do everything as best as I can. There's a big northern, big drop tine deer that I have for sports shows, and some ducks. There's another mule deer of mine here on this pedestal that I've made. Some African stuff. I'm going to fill this showroom up with birds here pretty soon, which is what I'm working on. Customer fish. And a, there's a carp replica that I made and competed with several years ago. It's kind of fun to do some different stuff like that. And we got another gemsbuck here and just some random stuff around. go into my office which is kind of under some remodeling process but here's a few of the awards that I've won and ribbons for best of shows and some masters division first place best of category there's a big personal muskie that I did replica that muskie there And that's the mule deer I took first on a couple years ago at the South Dakota show in the professional division. One of my bigger rifle mule deer. Just some European skulls of my own and another nice mule deer that didn't have any splits on him. And then full body doe that I'll be using for a decoy next year of my own that I rigged up. I'm anxious to try her in, uh, in November during the rut and see what comes in. So, And this is also a award winner that I took last year to the South Dakota show and won the best of category in the professional division with those ducks. There's just a turkey fan mount there. And then this is kind of my workspace. It's hard to keep a taxidermy shop clean. It is impressive to your customers when you have it cleaner, but it's just not feasible all the time unless you have good employees that are cleaning for you. That's an eland I just mounted up here. 
And then we're working on our birds right now. We got some bodies. The feet we just painted. Ready to go. Some more workspace. Gotta have the auger ready in case it ever <laughs> gets above 20 degrees so I can go ice fishing again. But, uh, yeah. So showroom zoomed out a little bit more. Well, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on who I am and my business and how I, I kind of run it. It's different from, from other guys' businesses. You know, like I said, some guys will try to do two, three hundred deer heads a year, but they'll charge, you know, three, three hundred fifty bucks. Um, but they're making their money and they're saving their money on tanning they're using the dry preservative method and they're using a little cheaper eyes and maybe bondo ears or um, so you can either kind of cut corner on your input costs and just turn out more and try to make money that way because there are a lot of customers that just want stuff back on their walls quickly and they want to be able to say I shot this deer and they don't want to wait a year for it they want to wait you know two months three months so if you can do that you know maybe that's an option to look at um, but I'd encourage you to strive for quality in your work it just reflects well on you as a person and uh, hopefully over time you'll be able to build up a clientele of people that are really looking for quality and they're not so concerned with how, how long it takes I try to mount all my my game heads and fish almost just the same as I do with my competition stuff and uh, I have about a eight month turnaround time on deer and anywhere from probably four to six months on fish and about ten to twelve months on birds so I try to get almost everything done within the year so they can have it back which is still a pretty good turnaround time and it keeps me really busy um, and I try to do things in batches which helps my efficiency go up instead of just doing one thing at a time that way I'm I've got my tools out to do all my deer and I just kinda get get in the habit of doing it over and over again for a couple months and then that uh, helps me speed up instead of doing a deer one day and a fish the next and a bird the next so there are ways where you can still do really quality products and um, speed yourself up a little bit, but it does take more time to put the details in and it's just a choice you have to make so There's no right or wrong way whichever you decide to do, but uh, just try to Try to pursue quality even if you are going to just do a, a quicker product I hope you enjoy our hope you enjoy these videos and that you are able to learn from them and uh, Just enjoy the art of taxidermy